Hi, Robert. Welcome, everybody. Um, I am here with Robert Hollis. Uh, we are going to do an interview with this fantastic man and mentor I am so blessed to have uh, currently in my life, with, along with Jeremy Buckholz. Um, these two guys have totally changed the way I have been literally living my life. Um, thank you, Robert. I just want to well, say thank you for taking some time for me today and, and doing this interview with me. Well, thank you, Brenda, very much. I'm, I'm so glad that I'm slowly getting to know who you are and you and I are becoming closer friends. And, and I just love your heart for wanting to mentor and teach, or pe teach people. I know you've been a teacher for years. And, and so that's natural for you. I don't know if you know in marketing, overall, the best performers and the best people that have helped the most people make money are not only women, but also teachers. So you got, you got two of the major things that makes people successful in the marketing arena. So I'm looking forward to this interview. Great. Thanks so much. Well, I'm going to ask you first, uh, first off the bat, I have people that um, are constantly asking me, Brenda, you're doing a great job. You're really climbing the ladder here. What's going on? What's the secret? When people <laughs> ask you um, what your secret is, why are you so successful? What's your secret? What do you, what do you tell them? I think it would be 100% when you said it, I, I, I would say my faith my faith. I really, 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 truly believe whether it's uh, someone would probably find it maybe a mental uh, disadvantage. <laughs> I don't mind. Um, but I, I look at what other people do and I think, you know, if they could do it, so can I. Now, never am I uh, arrogant enough or think that I can do as well as them. And that's, I think, has been my secret. So my deal is, is if I run into someone that's making a million dollars a year, I look at myself as being a little bit above average where if I could learn what they're doing, that I could make 100000 See, I'm not even going to pretend that I can make, you know, that I can pick up 50% of their skills and their knowledge and their work ethic. You know, so I'm definitely not saying I can do 100. I'm definitely saying I can't do 50, but I know that I can do 10. And that's always been my secret. So regardless of when I was a mechanic or regardless of, um, I'm learning how to do anything, even be a, a, a presenter or a speaker, a, you know, a, a, um, a coach or a mentor that get, teach people peak performance. I look at Tony Robbins and he's worth $400 million. See, my mind goes, well, I think I could do this and make $4 million a year. See what I mean? <laughs> I don't even want to. So that's my secret. I believe that God's not a discerner of people, Brenda, and if other people can do it, so can I. Oh, that's awesome. I agree. I, I love that answer. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks Thank you. That. Thank you. Faith is a big thing, and I, and I know sometimes I struggle with that. Do you struggle with some, I mean, some days yes. you just feel like, oh, this is so hard. Why am I doing this sometimes? Yeah, I would say to people that if you're if you're if you're not feeling uncomfortable, I don't think you're a, yeah, I don't think you're living. I seriously seriously don't. You're either, you know, and I've read this from a lot of success books, Science of Getting Rich is one of them. And if you're not being challenged and you're not growing, you're dying. You just don't want to admit that you're dying. So you can look over a period of 6 months to a year, 2 years, 5 years, and if your life is consistently in all areas consistently getting a little bit worse, you need to change something because you're you don't know you're checking out, but you're checking out. So to get directly to your question, the exact opposite is there. So me, you know, me building an organization and building a large, satisfied customer base in 13 countries, and and, and making over two and a half millions a year, that became at one time in my life comfortable. And so now stepping into this new range where, you know, I want my company to have a million people that we inspire and train and motivate. And now I'm stepping into all new stuff where I constantly in my mind are going, wow, going from a couple million to 10 million, uh, going from 10 to 100 million, is this really all worth it? And I'll be honest with you, I always, as I tell people, that I say, if I always tell you the truth, then I don't have to worry about what I said. Right now I'm talking to you and man, I need to find a time to go to the chiropractor because I'm not handling stress in my shoulders very well and I always get a stiff neck and um, and haven't been sleeping very well, but I, it's because of excitement. It's not the stress kind of thing where I'm going, oh my God, how am I going to cover bills? It's like, wow, you know these new things that I'm doing now and expanding into the legal part of it and expanding into the CEO space of being a CEO and finding the right people to help me, 
yeah, I, I all the time question whether or not I got the, <laughs> whether this is worth it or, uh, you know, do I have the faith to pull it off? And, you know, during those dark times, that's when you really get to figure out, wow, what is the reason again? Why am I doing this? And then immediately I'll see a, a message from you or I'll see a message from other, one of our other pros and, and, and I see what I'm doing in their lives and yes, it's worth it. It's 1000% worth it. So when I see people, you know, that thought, wow, I guess I'm just going to just let this thing get worse and this is where it is. And now I read messages and see your spirit, and I go, no, so you, you got a new excitement. I know it's pushing and challenging your faith, but I can't wait to see your success story. I can't wait to watch what happens with you. Oh, that's great. Thanks, Robert. Thanks you for did. that. <laughs> so let's talking about that in balance. Um, I know for me, I'm super busy, um, you know, have kids, working, all that kind of great stuff. Um, how do you find time to balance with your family and your new grandchild and all that great stuff that you've got going on on the personal side and this great business that you're building on your business side when the two worlds collide? How do you, you know, how do you find time to balance that? I seen I seen this analogy years ago, and I'm sure now because of the advent of Facebook and everything, people could find this. But it's the whole analogy of a professor standing in front of the room, you being a teacher, and he starts out by filling a jar with water, and he gets it to the point where it's almost running over, and then he asks the students, he says, "Is this full?" And everybody says yes, and so then he grabs a couple. I think it was um um like uh uh. It wasn't tennis balls, but it was like uh, balls that uh, uh, pull balls, like cue balls, all right? And so he goes, if I try to put this in this jar, then it just overspills because all the stuff that he sh said in the water was things that we just th tell ourselves that we're busy. We're doing a bunch of stuff that is really not. And so one, so he grabbed another jar and he put like, I think he only got like four or five of these big balls in there. One's like coming out. And he says, great, these are your family, you know, making sure that you take care of yourself, your, you know, your spirituality, spending time with your creator. You know what I mean? And, and, and he said, I can get these all in the jar now. Now is it full? And the student said, yeah. And he goes, no, it's not. And so the next thing he did is he put in marbles. Well, the marbles were able to fill around the jar. And those are the other priorities in your life that you really got to take care of. You know, these are things that are important, like paying the bills or, or whatever. Then he asked if it was full, and everybody said yes, and he said no, and then he poured BBs into it. You know what I mean? And the moral of it is after he put BBs in it, then he put sand in it, and then, P then everybody said it's full, and he said no. He went back to the water, and he was able to put more in there. And the whole concept, Brenda, was you know if you always are focusing on the priorities first, it's amazing how much stuff you can put in that jar. But when you're scattered and you don't put priorities in here, so – the answer is very simple, is I'm very focused on my priorities. My sons have known my entire life, including my wife, that if they need my time, they just have to ask for it, and the business immediately goes on hold. Nothing, my sons and my wife know for a fact that there's nothing more important than them. Nothing. So, And so Bill Ebert, that's now one of my partners, he said that I was on a business call with him, and Matthew, I think, came in my, my office and said, Dad, listen, you know, can, can, uh, I got something for you. And I said, Bill, I got to go. And this was, was um, I said, my son needs me, and this was a planned time for him. You know, I set up the time like you. You know, we're going to do this hangout. And, and all of a sudden, when my son asked, he said, I just cut him off. And he said, I want to work with a man that, you know, that puts God and his family first. So great question. So first of all, know what those are, know how important they are, and always put them always put them first. You know, I see people that struggle with relationships in their life, especially a husband, wife, uh, a significant other, and it's only because they don't feel like they're first. That's very true. I'm, I'm telling you, it's like wow. I look at you, and it's looked like I'm a number nine. I'm you know right underneath the golden retriever. You know what I mean? It's like. <laughs> <laughs> So true. So true. Now, I know today I had somebody ask me, um, you know, Brenda, what's what's the difference between the mentoring and the training? Because, you know, they're going through the success in minutes and um, that training, but 
you know, what's the difference between the training and the mentoring? It, it looks the same. Right. Well, one of the things I think that you could probably answer that question maybe even better than I. Um, the reason I always tell people is, you know, find out what other people's personal stories are. So when people ask you that personal question, you very simply tell them your personal story of whatever video most impacted you so far. Now, one of the things that when I put the mentoring chip program together, I wanted it to be intimate enough where it seemed like it was one on one, like I was there sitting at your kitchen table or sitting at a Starbucks or Denny's or whatever. And so me learning to just really, really consciously, sincerely thinking about the person that was on the other end of the camera. And so I've seen a number of different settings. You know, you can learn from a book, you can learn from a DVD. And, and when you, you normally learn from a DVD or training, it always seems like you're a, uh, a voyeur. I'm not saying that's a negative word, but you know, you're always seem like you're watching the speaker teach a group of people. You know what I mean? So it's, of course, and that's the camera view. And, and all of a sudden I thought, man, if I could just deal one-on-one -on -one like I'm doing with you and stare directly into the camera, get to know the person and really act like that person was a person I was taking one-on-one -on -one from step one to step done. And that's the way I think. I've, I've worked on it enough where I, the number one question I get is not only, I mean, a uh, thing that makes me so proud right now and happy and fulfilled is that not only are people getting incredible results from the mentorship program, but when I finally talk to them on a person to person like this, they go, man, I felt like you were talking directly to me. And it's because I was. I know that sounds weird, but, um, and here's the other thing I tell people. If you don't have $99, that I will give you back with no questions asked if you want it. 100% money back guarantee. If you don't have $99 extra to put the most, invest in the best investment in the world, which is you, then we already have a problem. We have a really, really problem that if you don't think you're worth $99 or you don't have $99, we got two really bad problems there. So my deal is the only way you're going to know is, is, is put the $99 in, start going through the mentorship program, and at any time you feel like you want your money back, ask for it back. That's so. great. Yeah. And I, one of the things I, I think of when I hear people say, you know, oh, I just don't have the money, I just don't have this, or I don't have that, and I think, boy, if you don't have $99 a month, and I get that that can be sometimes a lot of money to some people, but if, if you don't have that kind of money each month, your plan's not working. Correct. <laughs> and also, if there's something mentally in their mind where they feel like they don't, they can't slate an hour, you know, an hour, 15 minutes, and they're not worth that investment. See, it, 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 it's funny because, you know, Brenda, we always hear that you become who you hang around. Isn't it amazing that when you started getting close to finishing high school and everyone knew that Brenda wanted to be a teacher and she was... It, it wasn't an option of whether or not you're going to college. You were going to college. And isn't it funny that everybody around you just went, yeah, I'm so happy. I'm so proud of Brenda. She's going to college and she's spending how much money? Right. A lot. <laughs> oh, my God. What would it cost for a teacher degree today? How many years would it take to get that degree? And mentally, we go, that's okay. So now Brenda's at the age in her life where she still wants to, you know, take care of her family, make more money than she's ever had, help more people than she ever has. And people go, oh, my God, Brenda invested in herself again to learn how to be an entrepreneur and a marketer online. I don't know if she's worth that now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or we know that they wouldn't say that about Brenda, but why would you say that about yourself? That's bizarre to me. It, it, it really, really is. But we, we, once we get out of school and we get into our job, I tell people it's amazing with school. I'll give you one analogy I love giving to people. You know, everyone expects you to go from elementary school to middle school. All your friends, everybody. You, you, you get good grades and pass that class, you know what I mean? And then it's okay to go from middle school to high school, high school to maybe a community college or a, a big university. Now you go out and you get a job. Well, everybody expects you to get a job because that's what you're going to do. But why does it end there? It's like don't continue working on yourself. You got a degree and you got a job. Brenda, you, that, you know, we need to stop. And I'll tell you what, you know why people stop learning and stop building themselves? Because no one else expects them to. 
you got your degree. Now you got a job. You know, Brenda, would this be a good time to get married and have some kids? Right. I'm not really going to expect much more out of you. <laughs> I think that you're you're pretty much done. No, I'm not. So I got a lot of years left. Right. And I've never felt that way. Well, especially in education because we are constantly taking classes and renewing licenses and doing all that kind of stuff. So, you know, lots of times it's not necessarily things that we want to do. But right. That we have to do. And so sometimes, a lot of times, people forget that, you know, you are still a person and you still need to grow personally as well as professionally or whatever um, area that they're working in. So why not? Why not? Why not try to do your best to master your craft? I just, you know, my mentality is like, you know, do you talk about Jerry, Jeremy? You know, the goal to get into martial arts. My sons were both black belts, so was I. And, and, you know, the goal in getting into martial arts is maybe to get to black belt, but then once you get to black belt, isn't it funny that there's first Dan, second Dan, third Dan, tenth Dan, master? You know, it's like if you really want to get involved in something, there's always seems like there's another level. Even in professional athletes, it's funny. You go from amateur, you know, to college to, you know, professional. But once you become professional, wouldn't it be cool to – you know, win a Super Bowl ring? Wouldn't it be cool to win an MVP? Wouldn't it be cool to be in the Hall of Fame? So you, you always see people that, you know, Terry Bradshaw not only did all that, but he also wanted to be a very good announcer. He wanted to be a very good sports commentator. You know, so you, you watch people that they, they're always, you know, building a new chapter of their, of their life and then other people, is, and you can hear it in their voice, Brenda. That's what's like heart. You know, I, I talked to a person yesterday. I said, well, tell me a little bit about you. And they go, well, I'm a mom. I'm a stay-at-home mom. I was like, boy, that's so huge. <laughs> you know? It's like, you know, it's like, hey, I'm really nobody. Like, serious? Heart is all on earth. Yeah. <laughs> all so. on earth. So, so as, a, as a mentor, um, you know, you are very successful. You are, you know, labeled the millionaire mentor because you've helped create so many other millionaires other than yourself, um, multiple six-figure earners, which is just awesome. Um, when people need that little smack upside the head, as I would say, um, how do you come to doing it in a tactful way, but <laughs> giving them that smack, because I know I have needed that smack a couple yeah. of times in the head. I, I tell people, just like you do with your students, Brenda, is I know 99.9% .9 of the time, you're nice. They know that you care. People don't care what you know unless they know that you care. And it's through all the actions of people getting to know, like, and trust you that allows you to give them that smack. Which, again, that's probably the biggest difference between training and mentorship is a mentorship will call you on your BS. Your, a mentor will call you on your excuses. A mentor will call you on your limiting beliefs. And what they do is they get you to always be doing stuff that's uncomfortable. They're pushing you. A, a, trainer, a trainer and a person that would just sell training, um, you know, if you pay me money for training, I train. If you get it, you get it. If you don't, you don't. I tell people it's almost like the way I felt when I went from, you know, high school to trade school. You know, I brought that up on a, on, a, on a deal the other day where I said, listen, when I showed up, my professor didn't care if I showed up or not. They didn't care if I took notes or not. They didn't care if I passed the test or not. They, they, it's like, you know, hey, you're an adult now. Time to grow up. You know what I mean? But they never ever rec they never ever recommended me. You know what I mean? It was like, listen, I got a job to do. You got a class to take. You got to get a degree. I'm not here. A mentor is someone like you said that that says, you know, when someone comes to me and says I don't have time, I just basically tell them straight out, you're lying. I, I, I say, you're a liar. I said, you have found a way to justify lying to yourself because if I can get you a journal and you journaled every minute of your day, I'm going to find big gaps of four and five hour time where you're just being, you're just lying to yourself. So people go, oh my God, but you don't know what I got in my life. I don't care what you got in your life. I'll find that 
TV time. <laughs> I'll find that TV time, that goofing around time, that time where people are just like, well, I just need some me time. You know what I mean? I just, I just feel overwhelmed and I just need to, you know, disconnect time. Well, there's either two things that are happening in your life. Either you're comfortable and you're okay with that, and I would really highly suggest that you stop complaining about it. You got enough money, you got enough free time, that the way that you're taking care of your family and the money, money that you're giving to charity and community, that is enough. And right away they go, it is not. Then stop justifying it. <laughs> See what I mean? It's like you don't get one or another. And I think you've heard me on enough mentorship and training calls that I hang around people that do that to me. You know, I have people that look at me and go, uh, wow, I heard you make like two and a half million last year. And I said, yeah. And they go, how do you live on that? <laughs> and I'm going like, what are you talking about? And well, you know, I gave $110 million away to charity last year. Why don't you feel you can do more? Why can't you give more? It's like, well, you don't know how much I give. But he goes, I know it wasn't $110 million. I go, okay, so you're 70. And he goes, great, then you need to get to work. You know, what I mean? <laughs> so you know, for me to be challenged by a guy named Bill Austin, that's a billionaire that gives away 110 million dollars to fitting children with hearing aids all over the world. So you know, you you get somebody that gets in your face like that, they make you feel uncomfortable. But I love the challenge. I that's why I mention him all the time. Eric Worre introduced me to him. It's incredible. That's awesome. I think we all need a, a good smack in the head every once in a while, and I know Jeremy is my good smack in the head every once in a while. <laughs> you know? It's funny because he lets me beat him up, so I that's cool. <laughs> he learns from the best then, right? <laughs> yeah. So I know, I know um, mindset in this business is so important, and I know that's such a big part of the uh, training and mentorship is, is getting your mind right. So when somebody asks you, you know, what do you mean by getting the right mindset for this business or getting the right mindset really for life? Right. Um, how do you how do you answer that? What do, what do you tell them? Well, it, it's funny because there's a quote out there that Mother Teresa's had forever. And people used to approach her all the time, Brenda, and said, I don't understand. You're so, you know, of course, when she was here. And, and people were saying that you're just so loving and you're always there for people. Why don't you, with your notoriety, why don't you turn around and, like, protest against stuff? And here was her comment. She says, the things that you focus on, you make worse. And people are like, what do you mean? Well, you guys want me to protest against war. How's that working? You want me to protest against drugs. How's that working? You want me to protest against all this negative stuff. Now, the second that you guys want to do a rally for peace, I'm there. You see what I mean? It's like she just wanted to focus and rally on things that had a positive outcome when people are focused on the negative thing that's happening. So that's the key mindset is, you know, there's a lot of people that will look at their life and they'll focus on all the things that they don't want to happen. It's worrying. It's meditating on lies, you know. So you're always saying, oh, my God, I'm so broke. How's that working? I, I'm always unhappy. How's that working? I'm so overwhelmed. I always see these people that send me messages all the time. I'm so confused. I'm so overwhelmed. I'm so frustrated. It's, it's very obvious what their mindset is, but they don't know it. Some people tell me that I hate drama, and they're the biggest drama people I know. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's 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 one is is you can't change what you won't acknowledge. So you first got to admit that you do that stuff. Secondly, is now that you're aware of it is just to be conscious that you don't want it that way anymore. And the best way that I share consciousness with people without getting too airy fairy is like, you know, someone that might be a little liberal with their with their language. It's amazing that everyone knows they are. So when they get around a group of people that might be offended by that language or children, isn't it funny how we go, Jim, listen, you know, can you watch your language because we're around kids? And he goes, okay, and has no problem with it. Isn't that hilarious? Because it's like, yeah, I don't want to offend people or I don't want to, you know, have these people mad at me because I'm saying things I should around kids. But we already know they're that way, so we just remind them. But why couldn't we do that to everybody? It's like, 
you know, you're a little negative. You're, you know, you're a little bit of a negative Nancy. You know what I mean? You, you're you're the person that comes in on the water cooler, and you're always talking about, wow, did you guys hear about that four car pileup? It's like, well, I don't really need to know about the four car pileup. <laughs> You know, did you hear that measles was going all over the world? Okay, was that before Ebola? Was that before, you know, the flu? It's it's funny if you really watch people that the ones that I beat up all the time is the conspiracy theorists. You know what I mean? And man, they are serious. You know, so I posted this really nice post on my wall the other day, and this lady said, um, "Oh my God, if you don't get involved with the internet thing, that you know they're they're taking all our rights away from the internet." And so my response to sort of show her is I said, well, listen, the world's going to end in September anyway. I just want to replay. <laughs> so, you know, she probably didn't think that was funny. Is but, but still, it's like you get people that are so wrapped around that. So mindset is key. That's a long answer to how important is mindset. Mindset is, is really the way we think and the way we think about things, how we think. And that's what I love doing because that's what my mentor did to me. He taught me how to think. And I used to be, um, people don't know this, but I was very introverted. I was very into myself, egotistically. Um, um, I wasn't a very good communicator at all. I was like the kind of guy that really thought everybody around me was sort of stupid. But that's what introverted, egotistical people do. <laughs> so I, I only needed a couple of friends, and I think that if you really ask them, I thought that they were friends, but they didn't think I was a friend. You know, people like that. It's like, uh, you know, you don't treat your friends very good. I don't. I, I don't. <laughs> so thank you, Brenda. Really good question. Thanks, Robert. <laughs> that was a great answer as well. I love it when you talked about the negative people. You almost want the the music as they enter the room to just be like, mo mo mo. Yeah. <laughs> Feel the the attitude and the and the personality. So. I, I tell people my biggest, at once a year I try to reflect back on what I think was the biggest thing I was, maybe not time, not sometime not wanting to learn, but had to learn. And for 2014, that lesson for me is stupid people don't know they're stupid. <laughs> I, because now that I'm doing this mentoring program, I mean, the questions that I get back <laughs> are just like, why don't you just read what you wrote me? Right. You know what I mean? It, it, and it'd be like this one. It'd be like, you know, I do understand for me to make a lot of money online and never have a job ever again and be able to give the community that, that uh, I need to build a customer base. So do I really have to contact people? No, there's a class where you can take where the customers just come to you and you do nothing. No, that's a crazy. I'm just joking. <laughs> you know, I, I, the one thing I really love about the training and the group, it's not really a group or a team. It is a family. It is. I have never felt more a part of something than I feel with Unlimited Profits, and I know that I can shoot message out to our Facebook groups or to you or to, to um, Robert Jr. or Jeremy or anybody and I can get it in just about an instant answer really from somewhere someone um, you know how do you think that that family feeling came about because I, I've had more people say I can't believe that I sign into this group and right away everybody's welcoming me I've never felt like that before I, I think that that's something that as your organization and your family gets bigger, you'll understand that that's the way you treated them. So I've always had that kind of culture mentality regardless of where I've gone. And um, I love that. I, 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 I love calling people partners. I love calling them family. I love calling them friends. And there's actions and then there's words. You know, so... I think people are still blown away when I'll do a hangout with them and they're going like, why, why, would, you, why would you even take time to do a hangout with me? Uh, I haven't done anything. I know I'm still struggling. Um, I really haven't done anything to warrant your time. And I'm going like, that's all in your head, not my head. Because when I was struggling and didn't have any money and lost my career due to an injury, 
you know, and having everything taken away, everything taken away. I never felt so worthless in my entire life than not being able to be in a position to uh, to take care of my family. And, and my wife and I had already made the discussion about, you know, that she wanted to be a stay-at-home mom, and that's what we decided to do. So then when I can't provide for my family, you know, I, they're telling me I can't be a mechanic anymore. Now I look back at that point in my time, which was honestly one of the darkest times of my entire life, is the biggest blessing in the world. What really, really happened to me is whether you believe in God as a creator as I do or just the universe or whatever, is I got humbled to such an extent that everything was stripped from me so I could allow someone to, to speak into me. You know, you actually got to get to that point in life where you go, you know, I pretty much know one thing for a fact, that I know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> because everything that you know got you to where you are right now. And Albert Einstein, you know, has that great quote where it says, uh, you know, people try to use the same mentality, thinking, philosophy, psychology to get them out of their current situation. Well, all of that got you to where you are. You better ask for help. And so that's the way I always feel, Brenda. I feel like someone reached out to me at a very disparate time in my life and, and didn't look at me as here's a auto mechanic that's on workman's comp with a chip on his shoulder, thinks he knows it all, I'm going to help him anyway. Did I, did I add broken there? I didn't even have any money <laughs> to actually get involved in the program, which was why my system's free. That's why I want to start it out for free and teach people how to make money without giving me a dime. Well, and I share your story about that a lot when people are saying, well, I don't have any money. Well, that's yeah. great because it's free. Well, yeah, what is it's perfect for you. Nothing. It's free. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's the catch? Mm, no catch. It's free. <laughs> I always tell people right behind that, I say, um, so um, how much do you pay for Facebook a month? They go, nothing. And I go, same concept. <laughs> <laughs> you know, how much do you pay to be an Amazon member? Uh, nothing. Well, I guess you do now for premium, but it's like uh, you know how much does uh, you know Walmart charge you to shop at their store? It's like come on, you know. So yeah, people. And again, what I tell people all the time is usually people that ask questions like that are people that just are not open enough to know that they really don't want to do anything. You know, they're either extremely comfortable and they don't want anything to change, or they're know-it-alls. You know what I mean? Or they're in a position where they're all about what other people think about them. And so those are the other three categories other than being a winner where people go, you know what, I have the ability to seek out, find the right information. The guy that I talked to uh, uh, early this morning was, he said, I wanted to go on the record that I found you. And I said, okay, so why is that important? He says, let me tell you why it's important. People know who I am. And I'm the kind of guy that always wants to make my life better. So when I seeked out who was doing that for others, I found you. And I went, wow. You know, so I want to introduce you to my entire organization. He's got like 20,000 people in his group. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> but pretty wild. Great. <laughs> yeah. So... I'm going to uh, put a link on the bottom of this interview for people that are interested in learning more about mentorship and training. But from you, why do you, why would you tell people or why do you think it's important that people plug into the system and, and get rolling right away? Well, like, like Brenda said, we're not only good friends, but we're also partners. So what I would say to everybody is very simply this. And I've used this analogy in a number of different interviews because I think it just hits home very fast. One is if, let's just say that you made a decision that you knew from about, I don't know, four months, five months from now, that there was going to be a wedding that you were going to attend. And for whatever reason, you just wanted to be one of those scenes that you see and, and all these movies, you know, we all look at it. But, you, you know, you show up and when you start dancing with your partner, people are just in awe to the point where they actually clear the dance floor because they can't believe how good of a dancer you are. So let's just say you had that funny thought in your mind that you could do that. The first step is saying, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it, and I'm going to figure out how to do it. Second step is you could look for books. You could look for videos, DVDs, or you could go online, maybe YouTube, and probably learn how to do some dance steps. Lastly, 
you could find a dance studio in your closest neighborhood and go and learn from a professional dance student. I mean, teacher. If every one of them, if every one of the people that watch this video could pick which one they would rather do, it's always the last one. If we have kids and they want to be, uh, you know, in martial arts or they want to be a dancer or they want to be a singer, why is it as a parent we immediately know that we want our children to learn from the best? But we won't do that for us. You see what I mean? So there's people out there right now that have tried to make money as an entrepreneur online or or in some other way and I'm telling you what what you're doing is you're using school of hard knocks instead of seeking out a mentor that can cut you the corners a mentor can show you not only how to do the steps but demonstrate the steps and then show you how to do the steps and you pick it up very 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 fast so everybody that's watching this video Brenda has the ability to learn and and become successful at whatever that is for them you know what I mean? I talked to a person the other day and I said, just tell me what you want, why you're doing this. And they said, I told my wife that I would get her out of her job. And she hates her job. It's affecting our relationships. It's affecting her as a mom. I don't want her working there anymore. So see, the guy had a very specific goal of what he wanted to achieve. And he told me exactly what the number was to get his wife out of that deal. I'm telling you what, he's serious. He's going to make it happen. He'll probably make it happen within a month. So when you run into people like that to say, I want to be, I want to blow people away on the dance floor, then you got to first make that commitment. Second thing is then find the mentorship. And I promise you that, you know, my mentorship is about you just being a great human being. It's not about just money. So, Find that link or reach out to Brenda and, and she'll give do a tour guide again. It's really expensive to get started. It's free. So, um, <laughs> but Brenda, I really, really appreciated this time with you big time. I, I, I as well. I, I know you're such a busy person and you have so much going on right now and, and everything. And so you have no idea how much I appreciate you taking the time with me today to, to do this interview. I really do appreciate it. Well, thank you, and just remember that you're deserving, and I'm always busy helping people just like you. So thank you so much for believing enough to, to do this. I know that some people may go, oh, my God, that's going to be so uncomfortable, and I hope that that wasn't that bad for you. Oh, no, no not at all. <laughs> well, God bless, and we'll talk to you real soon. Thank you. Thanks, Robert. You bet. Bye-bye.